Welcome to the Audiation in the Wild podcast with your hosts, Bo Talifer and Eric Rasmussen. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 1. New sound files for harmonic patterns and harmonic progressions. So Eric, it's a new year. We made it to uh, we made it to season three. <laughs> <laughs> season three, starting January twenty twenty four, coming to a party near you. Audiation party. So I did have a good break, and uh, my meds are adjusted. <laughs> my <laughs> internal dialogue is adjusted. Had a few days off, spent, you know, a little bit with family, and now I'm home alone with the cat, and I'm staying up to four in the morning working on the sound files for harmonic progressions and harmonic patterns. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I, I spent, like, so much time, and I've... I think I've got something that's just brilliant uh, in terms of how it works. We just need differences. You know, everybody knows, can you end here? You know, Fleece is white as, can you end here? No, no, no. Yes, so just with that, mm -hmm. I want you to hear and audiate and absorb tonic, dominant, tonic. But we've been talking about it, but now we can actually play what I actually do in my lessons with these kids, but it's like an, you know, super deep and super simple form, like simple in terms of Engelman. Like, we're gonna, mm -hmm. we're gonna make this so rat ass eagly so <laughs> stupid simple for everybody yeah um you know because that's what i do for the kids and why shouldn't it be the same for you right so one of the things i started to notice when i was recording this thing is like how many choices are there just tonic dominant tonic mm -hmm. you think about it it's you've got the range you got the voicings you got is the dominant with a seven or not mm -hmm. right all of my tonics have do mean so and all the dominants have you know so t ray and some of them have so far t ray mm -hmm. so uh so and then that, there's the melody you know, like part of the voicing too is like the melody yeah uh, beyond voicing is is the actual like so, what melody is being led is, in the is progression there a melody at all right is it yeah. just do 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 t do which is the melody i suppose you know or so 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 fa so or whatever mm -hmm. um i have looked at this progression and, and i mean these progressions and patterns and I really looked at it and said, you know, it's not going to be consistent all the way across the board. Like you're going to hear uh, certain things over and over compared to other certain things over and over. At some point, it's just, you know, I, it, that just tonic dominant could be two days worth of listening. And we definitely don't want that. It's just too much. Yeah. Um, and so with certain compromises and in a matter of three minutes i think i've nailed tonic dominant tonic so this is a three minute sound file that you would have people listen to um are you having people listen to this like in class or more for homework kind of thing it'll be homework yeah yeah but, and, and, but you could use it for both i mean right now i think the best application right now is that teachers listen if you if i asked you to dictate everything i'm playing mm -hmm. i wonder how many people could get it just that you know completely accurate so one of the reasons i would say uh one of the reasons i'm such a big supporter of what you're doing and well and one of the reasons i would say that i could do it is because i've actually made recordings like this for myself and listened to them consistently and that's the only reason it's not because i have some kind of i mean i have decent aptitude but these recordings are insanely powerful and I mean, one of the reasons I think it's so useful what Eric's doing is 
if you just listen to someone play 151, you know, and let's say you listen to that every day, um, that is not the same as listening to a three minute recording where someone's taking 151 where they're going like one one five five one one five one five one different tempos different voicings melodies on top like you need all this variation to actually cover the ground it's not enough just to know like oh i think i heard do so do in the bass and it kind of sounded like one five one that's not enough um that's not going to translate into you know superior improbability superior ability to accompany and all this stuff you need you need something different and that's why i'm you know such a fan of this um and it's the fact that it's compressed into like a three minute thing. Uh, it, it's related to what I was talking about the last couple of episodes. It's better that you do three minutes of this a day rather than listen to one, five, one for an hour once a week. Uh, I would take the three minutes a day, you know, and, and condensing this into a sound file is, is really useful for people. Yeah. And this, so I need it to be short cause I want to get to minor right away mm-hmm. or, Instead of going to minor, I think it would be better to add subdominant and then go to minor one five one. Mm-hmm. And then obviously minor one four five one. So and I've already got the layout for what I want to do with uh subdominant function. But things get crazy when it gets to four functions. It's like, oh no. I mean how how long things could get if I do some of the things that I've I've done with uh this three minute file. So, totally. so I got tonic, dominant, tonic. Good enough, right? So what's the next one? Tonic, dominant, tonic, except uh, different voicing. Always root position for now, right? Mm-hmm. And then tonic, dominant, tonic, you know, with so in the, in the, in the lead or me in the lead, right? Mm-hmm. And then tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant, tonic, and compare it to tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant, tonic, where I've got a so, fa, mi, re, do. So now the me- there's a melody in the soprano, mm-hmm. but it's still just tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant, tonic, right? And now I want you to listen to tonic, dominant, tonic, slow down, carefully, listen, and then tonic, dominant, tonic, but something has changed, and it's the same voicing except for one of them is a dominant seventh yeah so you're really you're really driving like the uh an attentive uh detail on the different combinations and variations and differences uh within you know just this just this one harmonic or these two functions next to each other and i'm not even doing like uh simple like that even and maybe that needs to be included, like lighter stuff. But right now it's, sure. you know, full stuff. All right, mm-hmm. and you can hear those. And then uh, I really bring out the difference between the dominant and the dominant seventh. Yes. And the kids don't need to necessarily pay attention to that, but it'll if they, it it should draw their attention. And sure. it should start to draw yours. Uh, you know, it becomes really super uh, simple for me sometimes. Um, but if you're not paying attention, you might not be 100% sure. Like, how much are you paying, uh, mm-hmm. how much are you, you know, focused, paying attention are really uh, like, like you would be if I said, if you make a dictation error, you know, somebody shoots your toe. You know, and then you're going to focus. Uh, and then, you know, then there's tonic, dominant, 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 tonic. So and now you're talking thing. about, now you're talking about different variations in, in the way you're setting up the chord progression. So you have the same yeah, functions, but you're making a, a certain it's progression. Just, it's just not tonic. Yeah. And yeah, it gets me so excited. And then I slow it down again at certain places change the range uh there's just something to keep you alive and hopping and mm-hmm. then i get into progressions that match with songs like mary had a little Lamb, sure. like that sure. and i do that uh three or four times i want to i want to highlight uh, can we go back and give some uh 
uh, examples uh, in terms of you playing the piano or me or whoever wants to play. But can you, I'm really excited about this melody, like having stock melodies, like, like, or I, I think it's absolutely essential that people learn those as chunked patterns that they have in their audiation. And Andy Mullen talks about this a little bit in his work. And I think all three of us are kind of uh, zooming in on the same thing that it's not enough to just learn how to hear functions and then assume that people will just naturally be able to uh, tack those functions onto melodies. You actually have to learn melodies and just straight up know what functions go with those and you need to chunk that in your memory as a little, you know, this little. And then maybe later you can, you know, when you know more functions, it turns into. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, don't but, but that's where this is heading. But, yeah, but my, yeah. my point yeah, is that th yeah. this, this, um, this is not taught by a lot of people. And it's basically the, the beginning of counterpoint. The beginning of counterpoint yes. is knowing a melody and knowing what function. Yes. It's not, I, it's not this mysterious audiation ability to kind of like add the function i mean I, I feel like this is there's there's a missing gap in a lot of people's harmonic education where they think like if i just listen to progressions I'll, I'll magically be able to tack on the progressions to melodies but that's that is not how anything is learned you need to learn that through discrimination learning just straight up memorize certain patterns and obviously eric there's so many patterns right like how many melodies oh, yeah. can you think of that would have one five one or, or those fun like it's but you got you can't learn them all but you got to learn some basic ones and i think you're just yeah. you know you, completely you enough, on the you money learn here. enough rote for the, for this same it's the same as the tonal patterns you learn enough rote tonal patterns you know an R oral and verbal association mm -hmm. so that you know uh so that when you start to gen you can generalize just with our oral right so but ver verbal association is really helpful to go to generalization you can right you get enough rope that you can start audiating new melodies over the same progressions or mm -hmm. you know later on in 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 these recordings you could be able to audiate this you know with two five one audiate this with two you know uh flat two one mm -hmm. you're going to audiate everything my kids have learned to audiate in the last few years but it's going to be uh all in sound files such that you know you just go through the, exactly the same steps as i do with the children but you got to put yourself through it uh the good totally. thing about it is now y you can go back and review anything or rewind or or like that it's not like in a class where if you got it you got it you know we got to move on and get to the next thing mm. uh, but I want to uh, uh, it just got me so stoked because oh this gets me really excited too to, it, it, there's certain things oh my goodness uh, so there's just two forms right now you know there's one 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 five one and then there's ba 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 da bum ba ba da ba ba da bum ba. So now I got style added. So that's another thing. Mm. Um, but it makes it so clear when it's a dominant and when it's a dominant seventh. Mm -hmm. uh, and it includes melody, like just a taste. This is just level one. This is just to get stuck. This is just the first thing. You got style. Oh, and, and the last, <laughs> so it's all duple until the last one. And guess what the last one is? Triple. <laughs> sure. Right? So I just add some, some rhythms uh, a little bit. It's just for the itsy bitsy spider it needs to be in triple. So uh, they all relate to r repertoire. You can't have progressions without it being related to the repertoire. This, there's, you know, song mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. these things come from. You know, so they they can't be standalone in and of themselves unless I do a whole series of video series where I, you know, talk over this stuff uh, and say, you know, Mary had a little in. No, I want you to remember this is no and this is yes, you know, and then set it up and then go through. It's like, OK, now we've done those patterns. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do progressions. Um, and the, the difference between patterns and progressions is 
patterns are a way to define the functions and progression has to take those functions and put them into form yeah put them into a phrase put them into a song mm -hmm. put them into a melody so that now they have a, a link to something you already know because you can't I wouldn't start with this stuff without having sung Mary had a little lamb and you know well that's really the whole part that's really the whole part whole in this is that you have you're first exposed to songs that the, the progressions might not be super clear to people yet but but then by going into the micro atomic patterns and then hearing different forms the same functions just played in different harmonic forms whether it's like one five five one one five one five whatever it is um the fact that something's going on harmonically starts to become more and more apparent and i think that just as i was saying with the melodies needing to be you know melodies with accompanying harmony need to be taught by rote and then inference can happen from there the same thing has to happen with harmonic progressions you have to learn different harmonic progressions with the same functions by rote before and at a certain point whatever your aptitude is that'll hit a critical mass where you can start inferencing you know doing yep. inference activities but if you don't supply people with rote progressions using the same functions in different orders they don't have the raw material to generate inferences with uh, and so i like that all of this is jammed into like a short three minute thing right. that someone can yeah. listen to and we didn't yeah. even talk about one thing another thing mm -hmm. is that the the root melodies right? right yeah yeah at the beginning there are no root melodies that are any different than in this everything's uh the same rhythm so if there's a half note everything that's playing is a half note mm -hmm. there's a quarter note everything that's playing is a quarter note and everybody so it's down you know everything's moving and then I put rhythm to the root melody. Mm -hmm. So you start to feel the flow of the roots differently and the timing of when the roots change differently with that than there is with just the function by itself. Because the function by itself is, I mean, the roots by themselves without rhythm, other than, you know, landing on one or three or they're, they they need character mm -hmm. to help children, and I think it helps anybody to feel when the change is coming. So it's not just what the change is, it's when the change is coming. So now instead of dum 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 dum, which it, in itself could be ba 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 ba, but I like dum bum bum, right? So you, I am rhythmizing those things uh, a little bit. But now I've got do 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 right do do right. That uh, that helps, uh, and that's kind of in there too. Mm -hmm. So and it's not too like okay now we're going to teach what all these things are. It's just the experience of it, and being able to sure. recognize the functions, and not only recognize the functions but then identifying them, and not only identifying you know dominant from tonic but a dominant from a dominant seventh from tonic and mm -hmm. tonic you know with do in the top or you know like the melody that we introduced so mm -hmm. it's it gets kind of hairy if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> it could yeah. get really hairy because i struggled figuring out which ones what to do but da -da, and i've been doing this for 20 some years like mm -hmm. my choices what are your choices you know, well, I, want it, it, I want it in jazz. I want it in Latin. I want it, sure. you know, and I'll get to other styles later. Mm -hmm. But for right now, you know, this sets the framework up for everything I'm going to do afterwards. Mm -hmm. So adding subdominant, obviously, and I'll do some of the same things. But um, the style, easy to incorporate as long as you're listening to it. The uh, voicings, you know, get kind of complicated. Uh yeah, and I've I've worked with uh, quite a few teachers now, who basically are just wanting to up their harmonic game, and this is I think the biggest problem that people have is information overload in terms of there's all this stuff I can do. But I only have a certain amount of time each day. Like even if you have like two hours a day, you can still be overwhelmed in the in the crazy yep. amount of 
permutations. Yep. And yep. Um, I mean, one thing that I think is important to highlight is you listen to something like this, you know, frequently, maybe two weeks straight, a month straight, and then it starts getting phased out. And, you know, you can bring this recording back. And but maybe when the recording comes back, it's got all this stuff, but then a flat nine on the dominant chord, you know, so well, it starts. This, this right? is what I want to talk about is how this unfolds. Exactly. So this is, you know, this is level red. And I suppose you could start with minor and have that also be level red. Mm -hmm. Well, that unlocks, you know, major if you're in minor or unlocks minor if you're in major, but mm -hmm. it also unlocks subdominant. Now, once you unlock subdominant, right? Now, having done the subdominant, tonic dominant, subdominant patterns and progressions, now we're able to unlock the blues. If you want to go to the blues, and there's a whole sequence on, you know, the blues, because you're adding sevenths, you know, to those functions, to tonic and subdominant, mm -hmm. and of course dominant. Or you can unlock extensions, where you're adding tones to what you just said, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, unlock the blues with extensions. Or mm -hmm. if you did extensions first, right? So the, I've got to mind map this all out. Uh, I might, so to I, like, I. To like what has to happen totally. prior. Because once you get to a certain level, mm -hmm. all the levels become available, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's mm -hmm. Dorian, of course, and sure. Mixolydian. Uh, that's, that's as far as I want to go right now. I, because I, there's so much. There's just so much uh, value in the, in learning by ear, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and once you do, a little, even before you choose extensions, you could do, no. Well, anyway, that I've got songs that have the, you know, tritone substitution mm -hmm. and all this stuff that my kids have been exposed to but haven't named mm -hmm. uh, other than through the root you know, the root names, but, uh, yeah. And I think, saying. I think you're on the money in, in the sense that the most bang for your buck is going to be getting to one, four, five in minor as fast as possible. And then it's really, it's, it's really like a big debate in terms of where do you go from there? I, I'm a fan well, of introducing. Be, that'll be, that'll be operation. Uh, exactly. You know, unlock the yellow books. Yeah. And the yellow books are going to be like 16 of them instead of... But what I was going to say, though, is I'm a, I'm a big fan of adding the extensions to uh, 145 um, sooner than later. I, I don't really like this idea that like, okay, we're going to teach 145 in minor and major, and then we're going to get into other tonalities, but we're going to wait to do extensions. I don't, I don't think that's a good um, call. I think people are better off, especially like some simple ones, like the flat nine on the dominant chord and... Like especially some minor sevens and see, minor nines where, off the four see, chords. Yes, like those see, are so where, valuable. This is where extensions come from. They come naturally in this little light of mine. Mm -hmm. Let it shine, let it shine. That's a seven chord, or I mean a five seven chord, but it's got me in it. Shine, that's mm -hmm. dominant. Shine, let it shine. Right. So there's a me very dope over top of dominant tonic me um, and that's uh, like the naturally occurring you know me over dominant chord mm -hmm. and the natural occurring uh, minor uh, dominant seventh and minor mm -hmm. has you know with the with the dough in it here let me let me stop talking and play so, uh, sorry, is that right? What, uh, am I thinking something else? Uh, those are the progressions, but it's still like There's the dominant. Is the me on top. So that's a naturally occurring me over the dominant. I, it's I it's the 13th chord. I was there for a second. Well, yeah. 
It's just me over mm -hmm. the dominant. And then the other one, uh, like if you're in minor. This one's great. All right? You know, you've got, that naturally occurs in a lot of melodies in minor. Um, and so I developed that, those, um, extended function or yeah extended functions or functions with extra tones this is how i tell the kids i don't call them extensions or anything just functions with extra tones and uh you know and then you start to really hear the difference between and this you know like where you're missing the seventh and the four chord and you're missing the yeah in in the what, didn't i you know we can miss the anyway you, really you subtle out, really subtle distinctions is what we're getting at here bring out the differences and just force yourself to listen to them because i put them right butt up against each other mm -hmm. and then i put them butt up against each other the other way and I put them butt, butt up against each other the next way so that you are just by induction. You don't even have to t stop thinking about it. Just don't think about it. Just do. <laughs> just listen and sing along with it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. eventually, you know, you'll memorize them, I suppose. Now, I like the word recall. You'll recall them versus yeah. memorize. It's like, uh, can you write it down without... Uh, it, it, well, the, anyway, Gordon used to have a thing about using the word memorization when what he what everybody really meant was recall yeah like i think the discrimination you're making is that memory memorization in the way you're using it has a more intellectual component with it it's more vocabulary based more intellectual but recall is like actually recalling the thing you audiated once you start you can't not get off the sliding board that you went down memorization is you've got particular tricks or particular mm -hmm. um, connections to something you know like when you use every good boy does fine that's a way of, that's a trick for memorization that doesn't yeah, it's help a mnemonic recall you know what i yeah. mean yeah exactly it's it's a it's a trick for memorization and it's really useful you know sure. bridge i think the color of the rainbow uh that's not the same as recalling colors and naturally drawing a rainbow without thinking totally about Roijabiv or whatever uh, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not sure how that works in the art world but um, but I'm I'm highly stoked obviously I'm working till four in the morning and get four hours of sleep and get up or five hours of sleep and get up and start working on this uh, mm -hmm. along with some other things that I'm doing but I'm the other thing is that I, I give it rest and I come back to it and I look at it and I mm -hmm. I think it's um, <clears throat> you know and, and it'll probably mutate between now and when the actual recordings uh, get made mm -hmm. but now here's the next thing and I had it in this document but it's not uh... so here, here's my question to you Bo um, so I've got these just harmonic patterns. Right? Did you notice? Yeah, the second two patterns have the dominant seventh in it. Uh, and, and then, um, you know, it's, rhythmically, it's supposed to be born. There isn't anything about... Uh, the harmonies yet yeah, that th I mean those are just rhythmically bland right it's just sure. so what's wrong with putting some Latin percussion behind it oh yeah just to keep you 
So now your body's moving while you're listening to it. And that the rhythm, obviously, in the background, if it's, my, my curiosity would be, like, does it help some people and does it hurt some people to have that there? Is it a distraction? Mm. Um, but it's like having a metronome or having something. I just think this is going to kill somebody if you listen to that <laughs> 10 times. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think right. we could get to the point where we could really just have a three-minute track that, let's say it's a Latin track, that does all this stuff, but to the kid's ear, it just sounds like a song. <laughs> yeah. But it's doing all of this stuff that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and it could be like... But I don't, I don't need to do that. No. Um. Because you'll hear that in the repertoire that's in my playlists. Sure. Yeah, fair enough. You know. Uh, but I think you bring up a good point. Do these, do these like LSA kind of, because to- like, really what we're talking about is something like a harmonic learning sequence LSA. And the question is, does it have to be devoid of rhythm and essentially super bland and super boring? I, I don't think it does. Uh, I don't see any reason why it does have to. So keep tonal patterns separate without rhythm, right? And keep rhythm sure. patterns separate without tones, right? That's a fundamental premise. Yeah, at least having some kind of isolated, you know, event where they yes. can do where they have that. But but now I'm I'm beyond verbal association and ton- dominant or in three functions in four tonalities major mm-hmm. minor dorian mixolydian and i got three functions on all those tonalities at least is our rhythm patterns going to get in the way of my tonal audiation or are tonal patterns going to get in the way of my rhythm audiation if i'm singing melodies so alert there's nothing wrong with singing melodies right <laughs> What's wrong with singing melodies? No. When you're learning to audiate tones, tonal patterns are important. But now, say, I'm audiating those tonal patterns mm-hmm. for long enough that I've got some level of competency or right consistency of achievement. What's wrong with teaching melodic snippets and this is what we talked about about learning um you know learning licks there's nothing wrong with learning little melodies there's nothing wrong with singing melodies right nothing Mm -hmm. wrong with learning little melodies licks there's nothing wrong with putting rhythms to tonal patterns if you're already competent in the rhythms that you're putting them to and i'm talking about you know you already got uh you know, and then, and this very well may be content dependent. Like maybe you're introducing a new function where in the beginning of that new function, it is worth just hearing ding dong ding, like something really simple like that. But once it's, you have it's that, simple, then but it, it's harder because you're not changing anything. It, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yep. You could do that, and the ba da 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 da, right? Is you're changing both, and this is one of the things I do with the kids. Listen, that's yes, that's yes, that's yes, that's yes, that's yes. What's that? That's leading, and I'm leading, and I say that's no, that's no, no. What's that? So I'm leading them mm-hmm. with it. So I'm emphasizing when the change happens. Now musically, but but I want them to pay attention to the functions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I, I think there's some really great stuff in here, and I um, I've encouraged so many 
so many students um, and uh, teachers that I've worked with, you know, if you're trying to get your harmonic game together, learn to make these recordings for yourself. Whether you use computer programs to help you do this or just straight up play, like I'll, I'll often have uh, jazz guitarists make things like this where they just play over two different functions, you know, one and a tritone sub or like two five of one, two five of four in as many different ways as they can and just make a recording for five minutes and just listen to that thing all the time. Get away from your instrument so you're not able to use the crutch of like your visual knowledge of the keyboard or of the fretboard for guitar players and listen to this stuff until you can really identify. Um, and it doesn't take a lot. Like I think, I think an important point about this is a lot of people assume that gaining these skills is going to require like massive amounts of Herculean effort, but it's really not that necessary. What's necessary is the consistency. The brain is going to learn from being exposed to these sounds day after day. It's not so much about listening to this for like three hours one day. And like, and I find that very inspiring because it's not, it's not about doing a stupid amount of work. It's about being consistent with it and having a strategy that works, actually listening. I, I would bet the mo the reason most people don't audiate like secondary dominant progressions well and tritone subs well is they haven't done something like this. They haven't actually just listened to simple progressions out of the crazy context of like 40 chord jazz, you know, progressions, just like listen to two, five, one, listen to two, five, a four, as many variations of that as you can think of, listen to that every day for like a month and then take a break for a week. Yep. Um, I mean, I think that's the real reason people aren't audiating adventurous harmony. Yeah. It's not because their their aptitude is preventing. Well, they them haven't from... been spoon fed a la Engelman, where you draw exactly. the inductions and aren't learning from anybody. You're learning from what's being presented and mm -hmm. using your own intelligence, your own aptitude, mm -hmm. right? Your own ability to discriminate, uh, and then you go as fast as you need to. So you're teaching exactly. to your own individual differences rather than waiting for the teacher to figure out what it is. So at, at least at the music teacher level, because I'm, I know yeah. music teachers yeah. are going to get so much out of this. Oh, um, sure. And, sure. and that said, um, I want to let people know that are listening. I'm going to uh, post the dates for a February harmonic learning se sequence uh, you know course it'll be three or four weeks for an hour and a half each week I got to look at relook at what I can do uh, anyway I've got to yeah. rearrange some of the syllabus to to do everything because now I'm adding a, another component because I've learned a lot in the last year since I taught it last mm -hmm. um, and now uh, and anybody that's listening to this or if you've seen the notes in the, in, the, in the show notes that it's $50 off if you just reply uh, in an email to me um, for the course. Uh, it's going to be around $450 or $400 if with the discount. I uh, will post the, the information as soon as I've solidified the dates and then uh, so all you have to do is reply to me by email or text or on, you know, it just reply to me that you've listened to this episode. Um, and, and, and I'm allowing 10, 10 people to have that, uh, discount. Cool. So, and then if that fills and I only teach eight or 10 people at a time. I, I really like eight, 10 gets a little hairy, but not everybody comes every time because they watch the videos. Because if you miss a class, I you know, videotape the Zoom session and, and post that. So you also can reference anything you've learned you know, uh, on YouTube, uh, all the discussions I've had. And you also get access to other, uh, other course uh, sessions from other other years and other semesters so yeah it's it's really valuable uh if you haven't bought my book uh take this course uh you'll get it the book comes with the course if you've already got the book then you've got another discount there so uh but uh my goodness i am 
bursting at the scene because this is the first time I've really felt clear-headed and motivated and medicated and on vacation. <laughs> medicated. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big supporter of people doing Eric's course. I think having the community support, uh, learning from Eric himself, having the community support, meeting some other people that are going through the same process and just seeing, um, you know, seeing what they struggle with, maybe what you're, uh, what you're struggling with, but it can be very inspiring to do this in a, in a group of like-minded people. And I think, I think people would get a lot out of, um, taking Eric's course. Um, you know, maybe, maybe take Eric's course, digest that stuff for three months or six months, and then, you know, do another one or, or reach out to Eric or whatever. Um, so I think it's I think it's great that you're offering this for people. Yeah, yeah. And Bo, um, I know this has been an all about me, but you know, uh, episode. But um, you've got great things going on, and we'll do an episode in in more depth. But you have inspired me over the last couple of years and more to really dig and look harder. Uh, you know, this this whole revelation of me already doing Engelman before I knew it was Engelman and you shining light on that was like, oh, well, what is this? And um, you continue, and then also you have a different purpose in life. You are a practicing crazy person. And my yeah, practice yeah, yeah. is like thinking about how to teach and your practice often is about not only that, because you do teach, but sure how you, know, you get your fingers around new progressions, new tunes, new, uh, voicings new uh tonalities new i mean i mean that's kind of my mission that's kind of my mission here with mlt is like i i really want to know how people learn and so i can teach but i also want to i also want to know how people learn so i can push my own audiation like literally as far as it can go so and that is a is a unique set of skills and and here's the thing i think is that you don't want to sit down to lessons with an expert as much as you want to sit down to somebody who's up on one level and a few weeks or months later they're improving your teacher's improving so if you're not improving what mm. are you modeling for your students right so i yeah, encourage sure. people to to reach out to Bo that way and and of course uh, you know let him know what your purpose is and then he'll adapt he can adapt to so much i'm a one trick pony well, and, you know, I appreciate that, Eric. And I mean, basically what I offer now is I teach privately, but I'm getting more into coaching um, teachers and coach, coaching musicians who are, you know, whether they're improvisers or composers or performers who are really just looking for strategies to optimize how they practice, whether that's physical practice, learning yep. the stuff on the instrument or optimizing how they organize all their audiation stuff. Because a lot of teachers that listen to our podcast... I've no doubt can audiate pretty well. Um, but then when I start talking about, you know, some of this crazier stuff, like these different tonalities and these different um, progressions and stuff, it's not, it's not really a question of like, people know what's out there, but it's like, how do you start teaching yourself to audiate this stuff? How, like, and a lot of my inspiration, it, it's really just Edwin Gordon plus Engelman mixed together. And it, it paints a, a picture for like, how do I sequence this stuff without going crazy? You know, how do I, and yep. I, I've, I've been working with more music teachers this year, and a lot of it comes down to, you know, just knowing how to apply theory of instruction and make recordings that you can listen to in a way that you, you're not wasting your time and just kind of like right. hammering something a thousand times a day. And uh, yeah, yeah, so I mean, if you're, if you're interested in some coaching, um, you know, I've been calling it audiation coaching with people, but typically we do a month or two, once a week, and you just sit on that sit on what we talked about and digest what we work on for a few months and then you come back for another round it's it's not typically something that's done once a week forever because music teachers or more advanced musicians often don't need that they really just need like four or eight sessions to kind of go in the right direction and then work on that for six months and come back you know and that's what i do with teachers so anyways eric i'm, I'm very excited for what for what uh for what you're cracking open here yeah yeah it's it's finally i i've needed to do this but i also needed the space and i also needed to know that i'm at a place where yeah this is solid enough it's ready to go 
and it is. So I'm stoked. Uh, all right, well, until next time, thank you, Bo, and thank you, everybody. Uh, have a happy new year, or I hope you had a happy new year by the time this comes out, and uh, catch you next time. Thank you.